The Quran says, the Surah 98 verse 6 calls Jews and Christians the worst of creatures. So we're the worst of creatures. Surah 5 says that Jews and polytheists are the most vehement in hostility towards the believer. Surah 9 verse 29 says, uh, fight those who do not believe in Allah, and it specifically mentions Jews and Christians, and says to fight us until we're subjugated and we pay tribute money to Muslims called uh, jizya. This is a Visegrad 24 series about the Israel-Hamas war. My name is Stefan Thompson and we're here with another Visegrad 24 interview on the ground in Israel, in Tel Aviv on Frischman Beach. As you can see, I'm here with Dr. David Wood, the Apologetics Roadshow. You're a, you're a big YouTuber. You deal in the subject of religion and doing apologetics. You're also friends with uh, Rid Van Eidemer, the apostate prophet. You're here together in Israel. Tell me, what brings you to Israel? Right after the October 7th uh, attacks, we started responding to some of the people who were blaming Israel for the attacks, and we were just doing live streams and making some occasional videos and so on, and every time we'd say anything, we'd get more objections, so we ended up, kept, we kept talking about it, kept talking about it, kept talking about it, but we started, you know, hearing from people in Israel, like, thanking us for responding to some of these, uh, some of the, like, Dawah guys and so on, and uh, eventually, I said, people started saying, hey, why don't you come over here, and um, and then it was, hey, why don't you come over and uh, like visit these sites so that you know exactly what you're talking about when you're, uh, when you're addressing these issues. Is your support for Israel, you have a pro-Israeli stance, is your support for Israel based on some of the apologetics work that you do? It's based on a lot of things. So it's, it's probably like 20 different things. Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, on the one hand, you, you, know, you look back at history and people thought we had moved past you know, the, the Nazi era. And, and, and I think if you just go back like 10 years, it's like, that was all in the past. People don't think like that anymore. And after October 7th, you see just how quickly that can switch, like almost instantly. Yeah. And all of a sudden you got, you know, college students and teenagers praising bin Laden and uh, saying maybe, maybe Hitler had the right idea. And I mean, after World War II, I'd say they had an airtight case for why they needed a place where they could defend themselves and not count on, not depend on other people to defend them. Uh, because that's what you would have thought before World War II. You guys don't need a place. You've, you, you're, you're, you're in other nations and other nations are going to protect you. You find out, no, actually people can flip really, really quickly. And then we, again, here again, we, you think you've moved past all that and it doesn't take a lot. And it's just, you can, people can be manipulated in an instant to calling, you know, for Israel to be wiped out from the river to the sea. And so there's, there's that issue. There's also the issue that I'm, I'm a Christian, and I, I don't believe Christians did enough in the past uh, when it comes to, and Christians were often on the wrong side of things. And, you know, it's easy, it's easy in hindsight to look back and say, why didn't, why wasn't there more of an uproar? And, you know, to be fair, not everyone, most people didn't know how bad things were until afterwards when, you know, they, they got more information. But you look back and you're just like, how did you not take a stand, take more of a stand? And, you know, we're individuals, so I wasn't there. I'm not responsible, but I'm part of a, I'm part of a community. I'm part of the Christian community. I think the Christian community should have done uh, more. And so I'm thinking now if, if, you know, if my community did something wrong in the past and I have an opportunity to make sure that sort of thing doesn't happen again or to, to try and help with that, then I, I, I think I have a, a moral obligation to do uh, something like that. And then there's, a, there's, there's just this additional issue where you look at the history of the Jews and the history of Christians, I just have to say, those are the two groups that impress me with their impact on the world, that, that, that impress me most with their impact they've had on the world and uh, with their resilience when, when bad things happen. I mean, you, you, look, you look at Christians and people just focus on, they'll, they'll focus on something bad that Christians did and not, hey, Christians came out and then once they had the ability, they... Uh, outlawed infanticide, they invented orphanages, they invented hospitals. Um, the, I mean, and the resilience, the bubonic plague hit them, wiped out a third of the population of Europe. And then right after that, the Renaissance, then the scientific revolution. And so they just, they just kept moving forward, no matter what the setbacks were, no matter what they may be fighting about, they just kept moving forward. And it's, it's really a parallel with the Jews. I mean, they were conquered by the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, Muslim, they've been conquered repeatedly and they're still here. And you look at, you look at the groups that were 
around them in biblical times. I mean, where, where are the Moabites? Where are, where are the Elenites? The, these groups just lost their national identity over time, and the Jews are still here. And you, you, can, you can look pretty much in any direction. Look at the list of Nobel Prize winners for the 20th century. Jew, Christian, Jew, Christian, Jew, Christian, Jew, Christian. And so, um, I don't know, I look at it and I say, there's something here. And then I look at how they're just repeatedly attacked. And it, it almost seems like a demonic obsession to me. And when I, when I see that, and what I mean is like, you'll, you'll have Muslims and, and, and people on the political left and so on, and they will constantly tell us, hey, when there's an Islamic terrorist attack, don't blame all Muslims for that. That's just that group. And that's, that's perfectly reasonable. That, that, that's true. But those exact same people will say, look what this Jew did. And they'll say, this is how Jews are. And it's like, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you turn off your reasoning ability as soon as you're dealing with this topic? And it almost looks like, like, I, I can't explain it. It's like there's a demonic obsession with going after this group. And even if I didn't know anything else, like if I saw a horde of demons trying to attack a squirrel, I had no idea why. I'd be like, I want to defend that, that squirrel over there because something, sure. something is, there's something going on here. And so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of reasons. And so, yeah, I'm here. To, to, what, to what extent is your support of Israel based potentially on also your dislike for Islam? You, 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 you're called an unapologetics channel. So a lot of what you do is obviously defending Christianity and explaining Christianity. But you are a, a, a vociferous critic of Islam. Yeah. And that has a, there's a big connection there, too. Because, okay, let's just explain uh, it. Yeah, the, the, the Quran says, the Surah 98 verse 6 calls Jews and Christians the worst of creatures. So we're the worst of creatures. Uh, Surah 5 says that Jews and polytheists are the most vehement in hostility towards the believers. Uh, so that's what you find in the Quran. If you switch over to, and of course, it, also in the Quran, Surah 9 verse 29, um, says, uh, fight those who do not believe in Allah, and it specifically mentions Jews and Christians, and says to fight us until we're subjugated and we pay tribute money to Muslims called uh, jizya. And so that's what you find in the Quran. Then you go to the Hadith, and that's where you find, you know, like the quotation from uh, this in the, the, the Hamas charter, which is that uh, the end will not come. So you don't get your rewards in paradise and so on. The end will not come until the Muslims fight the Jews, till the Jews are hiding behind rocks and trees, and the rocks and trees are crying out, there's a Jew hiding behind me, come kill him. And so it's built into the system that Jews are this perpetual enemy that has to eventually be exterminated. And so when you see these, you know, these disputes over, you know, this land or something like that, this is all part of a bigger issue in Islam, that there, there's, 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 a, there's an agenda that is far beyond this that has been going on for many centuries. And it calls, for, it calls for the extermination of Jews. So people see, oh, you know, the Hamas did this and, and Israel did this. And I'm looking at it from the big picture. This is a little piece of what's going on. And there's a reason the surrounding nations uh, kept attacking in the, in the 20th century. They, they can't, Muslims can't bear the thought of taking a loss to Jews. They, they just can't do it. And that's, that's, that's pretty much the real reason. It's not over land. There's plenty of land out there. It's they can't bear the thought of Jews winning at some point. Uh, because if you, if you look at their ideology in, in Islam, it's we've got the final book, we've got the final prophet. Surah, Surah 3 verse 110 says, Muslims are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. And the, if you look at like how the trajectory is supposed to go in Islam, it's Islam is supposed to keep expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding until it takes over the entire world. And if you're a Muslim, you're looking at this going, it's just not, not looking good right now. Just, all these other nations are way more powerful than us, and we've got two billion people, and Jews have this one little country, and we just we just can't we just can't get to them. And it's it's uh it, that's just there's just this massive obsession. They have to they just have to keep coming at it, no matter how many uh, no matter no matter how many times they lose. And so, I, I basically understand what what they're up against here, and people need to be on their side because there 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 is there is an ideology that does call for their complete annihilation. A common accusation of those who, who are critical of Islam and Islamophobia. What do you think of that accusation? Well, it, it's stupid. If you, it, there is, you know, you could, you can have people who just hate Muslims because they're Muslims or something like that. If you wanted to apply a term like that, I, I would, I would be fine with it. Uh, like, like, similar to the term like anti-Semitic or something. Uh, but as it's actually used, any person who criticizes Islam for any reason, they say you're you're an Islamophobe. Then you could say, hey, you know, I condemn that terrorist attack, but look right here, th this is the justification according to Muhammad 
for why this just happened. You called an Islamophobe for that. And so it's, it's just stupid. And fortunately, it's, co it's concocted to, to, to silence people because we've just become a culture that's terrified of being a phobe of something. And so just by name calling, you can silence lots of people. And I don't know, I have, I have no idea how you, how you do that. Do you feel that there's a phobia towards Christians in the West? Um, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of anti-Christian uh, sentiment, but you know, we'll get by, I'm fine with it. Have you experienced some of that? Oh, all the time, yeah, so yeah, well, but I, I mean, I don't care. Well, I heard. And have you experienced any death threats? Are, are you kidding? Thousands. Does it tell us about some of, some of that? Oh yeah, so wh as soon as I started criticizing Islam on YouTube, they, they just started pouring in and the vast majority, the vast majority of them, you don't you don't take seriously. Um, but yeah, threatening to kill me, to rape and kill my wife, to rape and kill my mom, to murder my kids. Guys saying, "Hey, you want me to send you pictures outside of your house with your kids to show you I know where you are and so on." This is all endless, and most of it, you just think, "Okay, this is." If you were going to kill me, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be sending me messages. You just do it. The the only they're kind of two. They're kind of, kind of two categories where you start to take them seriously. Yeah. And they're, on, they're kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. On, on the one hand, there are people who I've had people like message me detailed, like five to six page explanations in English and Arabic on why they have to kill me. I was like, wow, this person's putting a lot of thought into this. So maybe he's actually going to do it. And the other end of the spectrum is like insane rants that go on for page after page. Die, 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 Jew, 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 die, 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 Jew, Jew, Jew. And, uh, and so there you think, well, that, that's a person with, a, with a, a mental problem and so on, but yeah. Jerusalem is a, is a holy place for Christians, for Jews, for Muslims. What, how strong do you think the Muslim case is for Jerusalem and for the Holy Land? Uh, as weak as any case for anything can possibly be, I would say. Um, you, you look at, I mean, even according to the Quran, according, according to the Quran, itself. The Quran over and over again talks about children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel. God orders Moses to take the children of Israel to conquer the land. And so now there are passages that say the Jews are transgressors and they broke their covenant. So you could say they, you know, they don't, they don't have like the divine rights of the land uh, anymore. But if you look at Islam, I mean, Islam comes out and they conquer their way east all the way into China and India. They conquer their way west uh, all the way across northern Africa, up into Europe, up into up into Spain and in, into France until they get stopped. They conquer until they get stopped, until someone actually stops them. But they're taking land upon land upon land. They're taking land from Jews and Christians and Hindus and Zoroastrians and Buddhists. They're taking land from everyone. Even, even we want to say, they got the Kaaba because Muhammad conquered Mecca. They didn't want that. They were polytheists. They said, no, they don't want him. He conquered Mecca, takes the Kaaba and the, uh, part of part of the there's just this obsession with controlling other people's holy sites. So the Kaaba that was the center of pagan worship, Muhammad takes that. He has to have that. Uh, Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, they had to have it. They still have it. They they recently turned it back into a mosque. They had to, of course, have uh, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Recently, there's a story where uh, the, the the Muslims had built a mosque on what Hindus believe was the birthplace of their god Ram. And then uh, Hindus tore it down, and then they're building a temple. And Muslims are complaining. It's like, what are you complaining about? That that land is sacred to them. You had no you had no tie to that land, uh, but they ha it's like they have they have to have all these places. And so, uh, as far as them having uh, Jerusalem, the only thing you can say is we had it at one point. Well, so did a bunch of people. A bunch of people had it at at some point. Um, I mean, the Ro Romans conquered it, leveled it. Eventually, the Romans convert to Christianity, so then it becomes a Byzantine land. The Muslims conquered it, and then the Christians conquered it back, and then the Muslims conquered it back. So at what point, like, how, how do you say, oh, we had it at this point, and therefore it's ours? Until you, look, until you give back Hagia Sophia and everything you ever took from anyone else, do not tell me we had that at some point, therefore we get it forever, and you have to give it back and, and get off there. Are you concerned about the West and the mass migration of Muslims and the increasing numbers of Muslims living across the West? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I don't have any problem with with immigration. There's a part of me that says, hey, if you live in a country that, you know, is it is it very good and you can get to a better place? There's a part of me that says that's great. But so with me, it's like, don't be stupid about it. 
don't be stupid about it. I mean, how many, how many times do we see they're bringing in people from Pakistan and they still believe in honor killing or they still believe in killing apostates and so, and, or, 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 they're, or they're terrorists. And so I think there should be some sort of, uh, it's better, be a little more careful about who you're bringing in because we, we just, there's just this mindset, I don't know where it came from, that the rest of the world basically thinks the same as we do. And they, they, they do not. They, they most certainly don't. And so you're, 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 it's, not, it's not my concern that you're importing people, it's that you're importing a lot of bad ideas and dangerous ideas that can get people killed. And so if you've got people with, without the bad ideas, I, got no, I have no problem with it. But yeah, you might want to pay a little more attention to, uh, to what ideas people are bringing, bringing to you. Dr. David Woods, the Apologetics Rate Thank you very much, David. Appreciate your time.